Welcome to the Brass Hand Woodwind Shop. In this video I'm going to finally get these valves sent out to Anderson Plating. The valves are very loose in the casings, so I need to build the valves up with some plating. I just want to say a little bit about Anderson Plating where I'm going to send these valves to. Uh, it has been around since 1948 and they are in Elkhart, Indiana and they specialize in musical instrument plating. Anybody can send something there to be plated. You do not need to be a music store to have them plate something for you. However, if you want the job to work for you, you need to know what you want done and then you tell them to do that and they will do it for you. For valves, you need to know what kind of metal you want and also you need to know what thickness you want it in. If someone just asked them to nickel plate the valves with a certain amount of nickel, they would do it for you, but you also need to have a way to fit the valves into the instrument when you're done. If you do not have a way of working the valves in, then the plating will do you no good and it might actually do it harm. For valves, you basically pull the valve out of the instrument and then make sure the valve is straight and then you can send the valve in for plating. On these valves, I needed to do a lot of work on them. That's because they are in very poor condition, but usually you do not need to do that much work before you send them in for plating. Getting an instrument plated is a lot different than getting valves plated. There's a lot more you need to do with a musical instrument before you get it plated. When I am done with this instrument, I'm going to send it in for silver plating. I'm going to do a video on preparing an instrument for silver plating. Also, they have a repair department, so if you send something in for plating and it needs work before it gets plated, they will also do that for you. If there's something that you miss when you send it in, they will call you up before they do any work on it. And I'm going to leave the address for Anderson plating in the description below. Right now these valves are not very cylindrical. They wore down very unevenly over the years. So I'm going to build that copper plating up and then I'm going to wear it down and then I'm going to build it up again with some nickel plating and I might do another layer. I'm not sure yet. We'll have to see how things turn out. Copper is a very soft metal and it wears down very easily. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lap the valves in with one of these casing sleeve mandrels and I'm going to wear down the copper plating on the high spots so it will wear down the high spots and leave the low spots. After I do that for a while it will make the valve more cylindrical and it will conform to the casing sleeve. The other parts in this job are the casings. The casings are not cylindrical either. They have worn very unevenly. I have two valve casing mandrels. I have an 871 and an 869. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the casing mandrels in the casings and then I'm going to wear the metal down inside the casings on the high spots again and it's going to start to make them more cylindrical. So what I'm going to end up with is a, large, a little bit larger casing. It's not going to take a lot of metal off. It will take a little off. So I'm going to end up with a slightly larger casing and then a smaller valve and it's going to leave probably about six thousandths of an inch of uh, metal that needs to be added to the valve and I have to figure that out too. I'm going to do that later but for now I have the valves pretty much cylindrical as good as I can get them for right now. Uh, I have not done any work to the casings yet so I'm going to do a little bit of work to the casings. Um, I'm going to do more later but for right now I just need to figure out what size the casings are in order to send the valves in for plating I need to tell them how much plating I need on each of the valves. There's something I want to show you on the casings. Each valve casing has a slot and that's where the valve guide goes into. But somebody put the valve guide in the wrong place and then they tried to shove the valve in and it made a big mess out of this casing. I have to address that first or I'm not going to get an accurate measurement of this casing. I'm going to try the .869 mandrel. That one's the smaller of the two that I have. That still does not well, it's pretty tight. It goes in, but it's tight. So what I'm going to do is use this one. The other one won't fit in there right now. I have the mandrel in the casing and it's in there fairly tightly. Um, and I have a piece of drumstick. With the drumstick, you can also put that over where the threads are on the casing. And it's not going to mess up the threads. That's a lot better than it was, but it still is way too deep. I think I may have to fill that with solder. I prepared the pistons and the casings so they're cylindrical, or at least more cylindrical than they were. 
So the valves are ready to send out the Anderson plating. Now I need to figure out how much plating to put on each valve. I have to measure both the casings and the pistons. This is an 869 thousandths mandrel and it goes in there fairly easily. When I go back and forth with it, there's not a lot of play though. So this is probably, the bore of the casing is about between 869 and 870. There are tools to measure the inside of cylindrical objects, but I do not own one. So I'm going to go with this, but this should be very close. And for the first time, it does not need to be perfect. It needs to be, um, it needs to be close, but I'm going to send these valves out twice. So if it's not absolutely perfect the first time, that's okay. So the casing is around 870. Now I need to measure the valve. This mandrel is 865. And it's pretty tight. So the valve is probably also around 865. I'm going to also measure it with a micrometer. I'm going to measure this valve in several places. Let's see, that looks like about 865 and a half. Um, uh, about 866. Oh, that one is about 867 and about 867 it makes you wonder how it fit in the uh, the mandrel in the first place let's see about 866 so this valve is approximately 866 I'm going to put on about four thousandths of an inch maybe a little bit less I'm going to say 0 0.0035 that will give me a little bit of space to work and also I need to put on the nickel plating so I need to leave a little room for the nickel plating when I'm done. Now I'm going to do valve number two and this is again the 869 and that it slides in there it's tight but it does slide in there easily so that's probably around 869 to 870 and now the piston um, this is 865 and it goes through easily. This is the valve that I put some solder on because there are a lot of dents and a lot of low spots. Looks like about 864 and a half. And yeah, about 865. 865. 864. And then on the low spots where I put the solder, yeah, about 864. So it looks like this valve is around 864. Looks like about 0.5. And that will give me a little room to take off some metal and still have there be a little gap in there. So, done with that one. Now valve number three. About 864 and a half. 864 this way. And that shows that the valve is not round when you get two different measurements in the same place. Uh, about eight, eight, one's about 863 something. Uh, 866. Well, this one is not round at all. This valve is going to be a lot of work. It looks like the valve is more tapered, smaller at the bottom, larger at the top. So this one's going to be some work. It's going to get some extra plating on it. And then I'm going to have to wear down the plating. And that's going to take a long time. But uh, it can be done and I'm going to have to do it. This valve is about 866 down to about 863.5. So let's see, how much plating should I get on that? I don't want to put on too much, then that will take forever. Uh, probably about, let's see, 0 0.4, 0 0.004. I want to put on an extra 5 on that. Okay. In some places it will be about a thousandth too large, in other places it will be about a thousandth too small. But I think we're going to have to go with that. This is the valve that was really messed up. I replaced two of the ports in there. I put a lot of solder on it to fill in some gaps. And also right here, you can see that when I lapped it, the um, it did not touch in between here. So those are some really low spots on this valve. So this valve is probably going to be seriously messed up. We got about 863 right there. That was in that low spot. I'll try it the other place. Uh, actually, it's about the same. 
about 864. 864. This is about the most consistent valve yet, which is surprising because it was in such bad condition. Here's the note that I wrote to Anderson Plating so they know what to do with the valves. I wrote that they need to be copper plated and also if you put, let's say, five thousandths of an inch on the valve, it's going to be five thousandths on each side so it's actually going to be ten thousandths. I don't want that so I notated here uh, what size I want on each side. So the point zero zero three five that would be 0 0.00175 on each side. Anderson plating will do whatever you want them to, so you need to make sure you tell them the right thing. Um, and then also I wrote my address. I'm also going to put my phone number down there. Um, and then the MasterCard number. I'm, I'm going to write that down later. Obviously I do not want that in the video. And then also write uh, package contains and then write down what you are putting in the package. Since the valves are getting different thicknesses of plating, and also the valves do not have numbers on them, I'm going to put one of these on each of the valves so that they know which one is which. Now I'm going to finally send the valves out. I'm going to wrap them up very carefully. I don't want them to be damaged at all. I want the valves put in there tightly so that they don't bounce around. And I also need to put the note in there so that they know where it's coming from and what to do on them. I'm going to send the valves out. They should be back in a few weeks. And thank you for watching and please subscribe for more band instrument repair videos.